The Princess in Black and the Perfect Princess Party. Pink balloon topped the castle tower. Pink balloon bobbed from the treetop. There was even a pink balloon tied to the unicorn horn. Today was Princess Magnolia's birthday. She want, wanted the party to be perfect. Princess Magnolia cleaned her tower room. She put on her favorite fluffy dress. She polished her glass slipper. She frosted a uh, frosted cupcakes. She looked out her in window. Her guest would arrive any moment, and then her glitter stone ring rang. The monster alarm said, said Princess Magnolia, "Not Magnolia. now." Not now. It was time for Princess Magnolia's birthday party. Magnolia. It was not a good time for a monster attack. Chapter two. Monster did not care about Princess Magnolia's birthday. Monster just wanted Magnolia. to eat good. Stopping monster. Monster was not no job for prim and perfect Princess Magnolia, but it was the perfect job for the Princess Emlet. Princess Magnolia, Magnolia ducked into a broom closet. She took off her favorite floppy dress. She slid off her glass slipper. Underneath, she was dressed all in black. She fastened on her mask. She was no longer Princess Magnolia. She was the Princess in Black. The Princess is back, said the Princess in Black. She slid down the secret chute. Chute, chute. She high jumped the castle wall. Twelve sparkly princesses were riding toward the drawbridge. Her party guests. She hoped they wouldn't look up. No one knew that prim and perfect Princess Magnolia was also the princess in black. Chapter three. Chapter three. No one knew the princess in black secret identity. Identity, except her face first did. He was a steed with a, his own secret. Everyone thought that prim plip. Primply pants uh, was a unicorn. After all, she had he had a horn on his head. Today, a pink balloon was tied to his horn for the party. When the primply pants pressed, the balloon bobbed. When primply primply pants primply pants cantered, the balloon swayed. Primply pants. Was in a festive mood. That is until his glitter stone horse shoe rang. The monster alarm. Prim Prim Pants went into a secret passage. When he came out the other side, he was no longer Prim Prim Pants, the unicorn. He was Blacky, the princess in black face for a pony. Blackie went to the usual place beside the castle wall. He waited for the princess in black to land on his back. Black Blackie was ready to fight monsters, but he kind of missed the balloon. Chapter four: The princess in black landed on Blackie's back. Fly, Blackie, fly! She said. Blackie could not fly. He was a pony. He was not a pe Pegasus. Pegasus. But he knew that when the princess in black said fly, she really meant run fast. And so Blackie ran ran fast. They zoomed through the forest. Duff, the goat boy, watched of over the grazing goat. He did not notice a tentacle creeping out of the nearly her. More tentacles fo followed. A monster rose up. Harp Dove said the princess in black rode into the goat go pasture. Blind boat, the monster guard. 
Her, said the, her, said the princess in black, the monster lifted a tentacle to each mouse. It coughed the horribly. Horribly. It got the monster shrieked. Ah, uh, said Dove. Ah, uh, said the princess in black. All monsters were the same. They only want to eat goat. They they did not care about a princess's birthday. The princess in black pushed a switchy owner's scepter. It turned into a staff. Behave, beast! She shouted. Back to Monsterland. No, it goes. He said. So the tentacled monster and the princess in black bed bathroom. Primper flip. Lawyer wrangle. Tira tree. Tentacle tangle. The monster went back into the hole. They always did, eventually. Hooray, said Duff. The princess in black waved. She and her pony raced back to the castle. Moments later, Princess Magnolia came out of the broom closet. Her hair was really messy. She ran down the stairs. She opened the castle door. Happy birthday, shouted the twelve sparkly princess. Chapter 5 Princess Magnolia was having a wonderful time. She sandwiches were delicious. The tablecloths were fancy. The princesses were delightful. It was a perfect party. Open the present, said the princess Snapdragon. Yes, do, said the other eleven princesses. Princess Magnolia clapped her hands. She could hardly wait. Oh, thank you, she said. Present make a party particularly perfect. Particularly perfect. Just then, her glitterstone ring rang. It was time to open present. Present. It was not a good time for a monster attack. What is the ring ringing noise? Asked Princess Snapdragon. It's an alarm, said the princess Magnolia. She couldn't tell them it was the monster alarm. They, then they might guess that he was princess in black. No one knew she was the princess in black, except Blackie, of course. That's alarm means it's time for a game, said the princess Magnolia. Yay, said the princess Bluebell. What game should we play? Um, how about hide and seek? The princess Magnolia, not she. Princess Tulip was it. She counted. The princess sneaked away. Princess Honey, Honeysuckle hid under a table. Princess Crocus hid, hid behind the bathroom door. Princess Magnolia hid in the broom closet. Chapter 6. Hide and seek made Princess Sneeze world nervous. She was not afraid of hiding. She was afraid of never being found. Princess Sneeze world blended in with the drapes. Princess Sneeze world blended in with the table lamp. Princess Sneeze world blended in with the log. Princess Tulip walked by, but she did oh not God. notice. Princess Sneedworth. Princess Sneedworth sighed. She was lonely. She looked was in very good company. She had seen Princess Magnolia hide in the broom closet. She would follow. At least then she wouldn't have to find alone. Princess Sneedworth opened the closet. There was Princess Magnolia's fluffy dress. There, there were her glass slip slippers, but there was no Princess Magnolia. That's curious," said Princess Sneezeworth. Where did she go? Yeah. Chapter yeah. Si Seven. The princess in black was b back in the goat pasture. 
Normally, fighting monster was a pleasant way to pass an afternoon, but today she wanted to open present. Behave, beast, she said. No, it goes, said the scaly monster, the, the princess in black side. Monster could be so exasperating. When they run, she would not let them eat the goats. The princess in black and the scaly monster wagged back. Scepter spank, pastor dash, twinkle twinkle little, smash! The monster went back to monster land. They always did, eventually. The princess in black led back to the castle. She crawled back up the chute. chute. She pulled on the fluffy dresses. She slipped on the glass slipper. Where did you come from? said a voice. Princess Magnolia froze. Princess Magnolia was not alone in the broom closet. Who's there? asked Princess Magnolia. It's me, Princess Sneezeworth. Princess Magnolia squinted. All she saw were some broom. The broom moved. Wow, Princess Sneezeworth, she said. You blended in with the broom. You're really good at hiding. So are you, said Princess Sneezeworth. I've been in, in this closure for an hour. I saw your dress. It didn't think you were in it. The closet door opened. I found you, said, said Princess Tulip. You two are a good hider. I checked the, this closet three times. That is curious, said Princess Denise World. Chapter, Chapter 9. nine. Shall we the present now? asked Princess Ma Molly. We really should, said Princess Uporia. Presents make a party. Particularly perfect. Oh, goody, said Princess Magnolia. There was a ring, ring, ringing sound. What is that noise? said Princess Orchid. It's the alarm again, said Princess Magnolia. She said, um, it's time for the race. The princess went outside. The princess mounted their Mounts. Ready, set, go. Princess Magnolia and her unicorn frimply pants won the first race. Princess Snitchworth and her pig, Sir Hogwell, came in last. There was a second race. Princess Bluebell and her Pegasus, Pegasus, Jolly Buck won. Princess Snitchworth and Sir Hogwell came in last. There was a third race. Princess Dinia in and her stack, Santa Bear, won. There was a fir first race. Princess Apple Blossom and her antelope, Ed, won. Princess Sneeze World was already lost. Sir Hogswell did not believe in races. Sir Hogswell did not believe in speed. Sir Hogswell believed in dinner dessert and her good night sleep. From the bed, Princess Sneezeworth could see all the princesses. She could see all their mounts, but she could no longer see Princess Magnolia and Frimpsy Pants. There was a fifth last race. That, that time, Princess Magnolia came in last. She rode up behind Princess Sneezeworth. Her hair was messy. Her glass slippers were on the wrong feet. Wow. That's a curious, said Princess Sneezeworth. Chapter 10 Now it's, it is a time for present, as Princess Apple Blossom. I hope so, said Princess Magnolia, because present make a party. The ringing noise interrupted er er her. Another alarm, as Princess Sneeze worked. Yes, Princess Magnolia frowned. It's time to do the match. We can open present after, I promise. The princess entered the garden maze. 
Prince Destiny worked good luck. She thought she would be the last one out. Eventually, she found the exit. Eleven princesses were waiting, but one more was still in the maze. Finally, Princess Magnolia emerged. Her hair was even messier, her dress her inside out. That's a remark remarkably curious, said Princess Sinead's word. Chapter 11. Now it is time for present, present, as Princess Euphoria. You, um, said Princess Magnolia. She held her breath. She listened. She looked at her ring. No ringing. Yes, she said. It really is time for present. The princess went back to the tower. They sat on the sofas. Princess ha Hyacinth handed Princess Magnolia the first gift. It felt heavy and round. Could it? Be a racing hermit, a goldfish ball, a crystal ball. Prince, Princess Magnolia couldn't wait to see. Then something happened. Something that made Princess Magnolia want to cry. Her glitter stone ring rang. It was really, really time for present. It was a really, really bad time for a monster attack. Thought that Alan meant it's time for present. Present? asked Princess Honeysuckle. Princess Magnolia whimpered. Please stay here, she said. I will write back, I promise. Chapter 12 Princess Magnolia left her tower room. She sneaked into the broom closet again. She changed her clothes again. She went down the chute. Cute. She high jumped the castle where Blackie was waiting. She landed on his back. They rode through the forest. They galloped into the the god pasture again. Yet another monster was terrorizing the god. A pink monster this time. Roar! He said. It goes. No, said the princess in black. No eating goats. I don't want to fight any more monsters to today. I have, I have had it. It's my birthday, and it's time for present. Do you hear me? I said. It's time for pre present. Chapter thirteen. The pink monster winced its ear length. The princess in black yelled quite loudly. The pink monster was questioning its dis decide decision to leave Monsterland. Sure, Monsterland had no ghosts, but it also had no yelling princess. Now things were awkward. It seemed today was the princess in black birthday. She was expecting present, and the pink monster hadn't brought the thing. He checked his pocket. A oh, goody stone, pink stone it had found in the cave. There were twelve of them. They would have to do. Pink monster, the pink monster held out the stone. The pink monster cleared its throat. Happy birthday in word politely. Chapter 14 The twelve princess went in the tower room. Princess Magnolia was still gone. It had been a long time. Perhaps she playing hide and seek again, said Princess Genia. They searched the castle. No Princess Magnolia. Maybe she's in the broom closet, said Ma Princess Nisworth. She was in there last time. They went to the broom closet. Princess Nisworth reached for the door hand. Just then, Princess Magnolia came out. Her hair was extrem extremely messy. Her dress was inside out and backward. One of glass slippers was missing. Princess Magnolia, you keep this appealing. 
teeth apparently. Said so, so Princess Snitch wrote, Every time it's time for present. I do, said Princess Magnolia. Yes, you do, said Princess Snitch wrote. Don't you want present? Where do you keep going? Princess Magnolia looked down. Her hands were full of thorn. She held them up. Them up. To get present for you, she said. After all, presents make a party particularly perfect. She handed out the stones. There was one for each princess. They were clear and pink and very pretty. They're perfect, said Princess Nidward. Absolutely perfect. It was it was the company the game the gift. It was the most perfect party Princess Magnolia had ever had. The end.